Inflation has Americans worried, really worried. 83% of Americans surveyed said it was a source of stress. Meanwhile, the luxury market is booming. At LVMH, which includes brands like Louis Vuitton, Dior, Fendi, Tiffany, and Tag Heuer, revenues were up 23% last year. So what gives? It's called revenge inflation spending, when middle-class consumers alternate between penny-pinching and splurging. Like when you pack your lunch to keep costs down, but then you impulsively buy a luxury bag. Here's what's going on in our brains when we're making financial decisions that seem to conflict. To order or not to order. Little financial decisions like this have more of an impact on our financial future and present because of inflation. This chart tracks the changes in prices for everything from electricity to food and clothes. And as you can see, and have probably already felt, things are expensive. The prospect of layoffs is also causing additional stress, increasing incentives to cut costs wherever we can. But self-control can be hard. It creates a conflict between our long-term goal of saving and our need to feel good now. That conflict plays out in areas of the brain involved in cognitive control and processing rewards. Say you're thinking of getting a fancy latte. The brain's reward circuit, which includes the amygdala and the ventral striatum, motivates you to treat yourself. But then there's the prefrontal cortex, which handles impulse control and helps you plan for the future. Candace Rayo, a cognitive neuroscientist who studies self-control, says that the brain integrates signals from these areas to come up with a reward value. That value is determined by how beneficial a certain choice might be. And that's what's driving choice behavior. When you skip that latte, your prefrontal cortex nudges that reward value toward more financially sound decisions. So it helps us choose in favor of our long-term goals. This balancing act is relevant to any choice where there's an inherent conflict between short and long-term outcomes. Researchers used to think that when we gave into temptations, the ability of our prefrontal cortex to exert self-control was just poof, gone. Instead, it's limited, kind of like your money. So if you've been constantly making tiny decisions about how to save on groceries or how to cut down on your electric bill, you may not have enough cognitive resources to keep yourself from splurging. That's what happened to my coworker, Rachel Wolf. She wrote an article about revenge spending after dropping $40 on hand soap. So not everybody is splurging. It obviously requires a little bit of flexibility in your budget. What drove me was definitely frustration. I've been trading down in so many other places in my life. Rachel and the other consumers she spoke to figured the iffy economy wasn't gonna change anytime soon. And when they chose to splurge, it was because self-control simply cost them too much. I think it speaks to the mental gymnastics we're all doing, and um, it's, it's the balancing act. There's two things going on here. First, our brains value rewards in the future less than rewards in the present. And second, stress. This includes financial stress, which may magnify our desire to feel good. It also compromises the ability of the prefrontal cortex to control impulsive behavior. Stress-related hormones like norepinephrine and cortisol can impair the ability of the prefrontal cortex to incentivize behavior that aligns with our long-term goals. Stress also makes reward areas more sensitive to dopamine, a molecule that makes us feel good. This is why stress can make rewards seem more rewarding and self-control more difficult. So you kind of have a, a double hit impairing these self-control decisions. That means that stressors like inflation, rising housing costs and plagues can prime us for indulgent behavior. And this is a problem, right? Because it's when we're under stress that we really need these resources to control our behavior and make choices that align with our long-term goals. So what can you do to make sure you're nice to yourself without breaking the bank? To get answers, I called up Michael Leersch, a cognitive psychologist at Wells Fargo. Don't be overly frugal unnecessarily because that can exhaust your mind. Michael also suggested writing a list of small treats that make you happy but won't set you back financially. He and Candace told me that exerting self-control all the time isn't necessarily good either. And reframing financial discipline as rewarding can also help especially if you actually get to see the money piling up in the banking, which also leads to a peace of mind emotion that a lot of people say the desire when it comes to their money. He suggested keeping a financial diary and updating it at three, six, and 12 months to track your progress. Hopefully seeing those dollars adding up will give you the burst of dopamine you need to motivate you to keep saving and avoid too much revenge spending. Just keep in mind that dopamine isn't just the feel-good molecule. It's also about motivation.